What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you 5 amazing quick photoshop tools that's going to save you a bunch of time starting with the fill tool. So this tool is here to save you a bunch of time when scaling and extending images. For example, we have this nice mountainscape image. Let's say that we want to put into a square format like an Instagram post and there's a little bit of negative space on the left and right. So what we want to do is go on the left toolbar and select the rectangle tool. And what we want to do is highlight that negative space. But also when we highlight it, make sure that we want to have that little rectangle touching a bit of the image so the Photoshop AI knows what to extend. So we're going to do the left and right side. What we want to do is left click and then scroll down to fill and press that. Make sure it's on content aware, opacity 100 and then we're going to press OK. And depending on how complex the image is, it might take a little bit longer, like a few seconds. And voila, there we have it. It's pretty much like magic where it saved us a bunch of time. Otherwise we had to manually extend the image piece by piece. It did a really great job in terms of what the AI can do. And as you can see, sometimes they'll do things that we don't want to extend. For example, on the bottom left hand corner, we have that freeway of these cars drifting out of nowhere. And that's an easy fix. We can manually take that out. So if we go on the left toolbar and select the patch tool, what we want to do is highlight that extra freeway that we don't need and we're going to slowly drag an area that we want it to duplicate to get a little bit high up so we're going to drag that cursor upwards and there we have it it did a really great job and that was the fill tool next up we have the patch and stamp tool so this tool is really great for removing things really quickly out of the image so we have this beautiful image of a surfer on the beach and what we want to do is remove this person the perfect tool is the patch tool so on the toolbar on the left hand side we're going to select the patch tool and it's located under the eyedroppers it's a rectangle icon that has a couple of lines coming out of it it looks like a hairy rectangle and we're gonna select that let's zoom into the photo and just quickly bubble select the surfer you don't have to do it in one go if you stop that's okay just hold down shift and continue to highlight the surfer take as much breaks as you want just make sure you hold down shift if you want to continue to select it so after we have that done what's cool about the patch tool is as you hold and drag your cursor it's going to show you which area is going to use this ai to duplicate the scenery so the right hand side is a bit too different from what we want to duplicate so as we move that cursor to the left hand side it looks similar to what we want to have it patched and cloned to the way that i'm guiding myself is on the edge of the, where the water meets the sand there's a nice line divider so i'm just making sure to align that and we're going to release and just as quick as that it erased the surfer rather than us having to manually erase that person ourselves which might take a while and sometimes the ai can be a little sloppy as you can see there's some awkward and random blurriness and we're just going to use the patch and stamp tool to clean it up and make sure that it looks more natural and sharp with the other image as well. Next up we have is the color replacement tool and this tool is really useful in terms of having to change a specific color really quickly and we have this fun image of a guy wearing this very vibrant red sweater and what we want to do is change that color so if we go on a left toolbar and under the brush tool if you highlight that, there's gonna be a couple of different options. What we wanna select is that dirt option where it's color replacement tool. We're gonna to click on that. And on the top, there's gonna to be some settings. We wanna make sure that the mode is set to color and the limits, we don't really wanna to touch it. And tolerance, this is where we could play around with it. We're gonna select 75 for right now. And for the color, let's make it this nice cobalt blue. And we're gonna just start painting that in. And you can see that it's doing a really great job in terms of selecting as much as it knows. And make sure that the color that you want to change is within that circular brush tool. So when it goes outside, it might overlap with other image sections, which you don't want. So make sure it's tightly within that circumference of that brush circle. And there you have it, that vibrant red sweater turned into this nice cool blue. So that was the color replacement tool, a really fun and rapid tool to use for quick color changes on images. So next up is a smart object tool. And this tool is gonna save you a bunch of times in terms of just having to do one work for a bunch of other different things so let me show you what i'm talking about we have this signage and what we want to do is replace it with a bunch of other cool logos let's first remove this logo so it's a blank slate that we can work off of we're going to use the polygon lasso tool to select the areas and use the fill tool to erase everything so we're going to do that left area first and then the right so after that's cleaned up 
we're gonna mimic that rectangle sinus shape so we're gonna draw a rectangle let's color it black so command D and we're gonna drag the layer panel and layer that black rectangle smart object after that we're gonna left click scroll down to convert smart object and then we're gonna left click that black rectangle click distort and what the distort tool is going to allow us to play with the edges and perspective so that we can make that rectangle fit into the sinus shape. So as you can see, as I'm dragging that left anchor point, it's going to be super flexible. So we're just going to drag it into that front signage. Let's double click that smart object. And then we're going to change that rectangle color to red and always make sure to command save it so it updates to the original artboard. And as you can see, it completely updated that signage to red. So we're gonna start dragging in different logos and replacing the old one with these new ones. So we have this New York Times logo. We're gonna command save that. And as you can see, there's this white area that doesn't blend well with that signage. So in the layers panel, what we wanna do is blend it in using the blend modes. Right now it's on normal. We're gonna click on that on the layer panel, scroll down to multiply and it blends in super well. So we're gonna keep on dragging some fun logos into the mix to see how it looks. And just like that, with the smart object, you continuously drop in full logos into the mix to see how it looks. And it's a really great tool to use when you're working on templates and mockups where it needs multiple iterations and designs. Last up we have is the blending mode options. So we have this rad Nike shoe with the drop shadow that's created naturally from the photography. For example, if we wanna change the color background on these shoes it's gonna be difficult for us to erase everything and also keep that shadow in the background so a quick hack that I usually do that helps me out is duplicate the layers and add a multiply effects and slowly erase to keep the drop shadows from the shoe so let's set the background that we want to change is with this really neon -y green color Let's drag that to the bottom. We're gonna duplicate this layer and make one a masking layer. So let's make the top one a mask layer. So the mask tool is a rectangle with a circle in the middle. We're gonna click on that, Command D it so it's completely transparent first. So we can add in the natural colors of the shoe afterwards. So we're gonna go on the top and click on normal and select multiply. So as you can see that multiply effect blends in that shadow well. And then on the top, we're gonna bring back that mask tool and slowly paint in that natural color back in using the paintbrush tool and making sure that the color we're selected is white. It is gonna take you a few minutes to do, but once we have it locked, it's gonna be so much more worth it versus you having to recreate that shadow, which can look unnatural. And after we have everything cut out using that mask tool and keeping the original shadows using the multiply effect, we're gonna start changing the colors of the background and you know it did take us a little bit of time but so much more worth it to see how flexible we could change the colors and how well it looks where that bottom shadow naturally blends in with all of these cool gradient colors so that was the, the multiply effect tool and this tool works really well for other detailed areas like hair to tree branches to other very detailed and complex images that you want to remove the background might be super impossible to do by hand just use the multiply effect and slowly brush it in using the mask tool on the areas that are more visible than others. So those are five helpful tools that I use every day that really saves me time when working on any type of project. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.